Hey everybody, welcome back to JD Does Dev. I'm JD, and today we're going to be continuing our inverse kinematics in 2D tutorial with part two. When we left off, we should have had this animation going here. So if this looks familiar, then you did it right. However, there are a couple things that we need to change. For one, we need to move our IK targets into the character container. That way we can use the character container to move everything around. If we didn't do that, and we were to move our character container or our entire character, well, this happens because all the targets are just hanging out outside of it. So I'm gonna undo that and let's pop that back up here. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is we wanna be able to animate this rotated. And what do I mean by rotated? I mean, make sure that if our character is facing left or walking left, that it looks like they're walking left. So one way to do this is to change the scale of the container to X equals negative one. But if we do this, there's a problem with the way that Godot is right now. I'm gonna take our foot target here and move it around. And let's zoom in a little bit and see what's going on. It's a bit of a bug where even though we're moving our, flipping everything around, the constraints get a little bit weird and that happens with all of them. So let me reset that and check our animation. All right. So there it's working fine if I switch it. Ooh, that's not quite right now, is it? So we're gonna pause it. And the way we're gonna get around this is by using an add-on from the asset library. So we're gonna go in, we're going to look for super, S-O-U-P-E-R, superior 2D skeleton modifications. We're going to download that and install it. Asset installed successfully, and that's a message we wanna see. So let's hit okay, we go up to our project, Project settings, plugins, and enable. Close that, and let's get back to our 2D scene. So what this plugin does is it gives us better control and fixes some of the bugs that are currently in Godot. For it to work though, we need to make a few adjustments. So we're going to go into our Bones Skeleton 2D and get rid of that modification stack. Now, once we do that, you would expect all the constraints to disappear here. They haven't. One way to get around this is to just change into a different scene and everything disappears, it goes back to the rest pose, which is exactly what we wanna see. So once we're back here, we're gonna take a look at some of the nodes that are available with that add-on we just installed. So we're going to add a new node, we're going to do a search for a suit, and we have a list of all of them here. Now, one thing that I like about this superior add-on is that all of the new nodes created by it have descriptions. We don't see that all the time, so it is refreshing to see that. So we, a couple things that we have here, a few little gizmos. These are more visual than anything. The constraint, the mod, again, this one is doesn't really do anything. It's just the base node. A couple of different types of modifications, look at, and then stacks. So we're going to put some of these together in order to get our inverse kinematics. We're gonna start with the soup stack. Now this needs to be a child of your skeleton 2D. So let's create that. And then we're going to add in a couple more. So we want to add in a couple of sub stacks. I like to separate the top from the bottom, the, the upper body from the lower body. So I'm going to rename this one upper body. Make sure this is a child of soup stack, lower body. Okay. So let's start with the legs. We're gonna add in two nodes for right now. We want the two bone IK, and then next to that, we want a look at. We're just gonna do one leg at first here. So let's do the right leg, leg right IK, and leg right look at. And this is very similar to that skeleton modification that we did before. So we need to choose a target node. For that, it's going to be our foot R target. We're gonna enable it, and then add our joint bone nodes. Now these go from top to bottom, inside to out. So we're going to start with the closest to the center, going all the way out to the, the furthest, the one that we want to use to move things around. So that will be our leg R, followed by our shin R as joint two. And the chain tip for this is going to be foot R. So that should set up the, the inverse kinematics for the right leg, the basics of it. So let's take a look right now. And there we are, we've got it. Perfect. So let's get that line back up. Now, if your your look at targets are a little bit off, 
here. I'm just going to rename this one because I noticed I forgot the R. Then just go to the look at, we'll hit the position reset, and then move it out just a little bit on the X axis. Okay, so now let's set that look at. Target node is going to be put our look at. We're going to enable it. And the bone node that we're going to assign it to is going to be our foot R. When we move this one around, put our look at. There we go. Perfect. Now we can go back to our foot R target, leg R target. But are you noticing something here? It's not bending the right way. Now we had to add a constraint before. This time, however, not necessary. All that we have to do is go to our leg IK tar uh, node and flip bend direction. Let's go back here. Great, it's bending the right way. That's what we want to see. Now that's really simple way to, to get this fixed. So let's do it again over on the left leg. So I'm going to add in the same types of nodes here. We go on IK, look at, make sure that they are siblings and not, not parented. Leg L, IK, leg L, look at, and then assign them just like we did before. So we're going to keep the bend direction flip, we're going to enable, we're going to change the target to the foot L target. And for our joint bone, bone nodes, we're going to do the same thing. Leg L, chin L, foot L. Now in the left leg look at, or the leg L look at, we need to set our target node, which is going to be the node that we're using for the look at. That's going to be our foot L look at. Make sure it's enabled. Change our bone node to foot L. Now let's check it out. Perfect. And where's our foot L, L target? There we go. I'm going to bring this over just a little bit closer so that we have a bit better control. Now we can do the same for the arms and that's exactly what we're going to do. Start with the upper body. I'm going to add in now two two bone IKs and a look at. So let's do arm L IK, arm R IK, and head look at. So let's go with our arm L I K and we're going to set our target node here to our arm L target enabled and the joint one bone node since we're doing arm L is going to be arm L point two is going to be for arm L and now the chain tip this is those marker 2 D's that we set up under there find the arm for arm L marker 2 D we're going to do the same thing in the right arm we're going to set the target node to the arm R target enabled joint one bone node is going to be arm R or arm R chain tip is going to be that marker 2D and now let's take a look perfect got them moving and the last thing to do here is that head target Got right here, not hits to anything. So we're going to do a head look at target node is head target enabled bone node going to be head. Awesome, right? So there are other things that we could do. We could add as many targets as targets as we wanted to, uh, as long as they make sense. All right. And one more thing that we forgot to do in the last video is we need to add in remote transform for the hip so that we can have a much better walking animation. So let's do that. Hip, remote, transform 2D, remote path, sign, hip. Now when we move the hip around, that's going to move the hip around. But let's do it with the torso as well. So one way that we could do this is by going into our body and make the body a child of the hip. That way, when one moves, the other moves as well. Go back to the hip bone. There we go. Now everything moves the way that we want it to. And we got a little happy dancing robot here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You feel that groove? He's feeling it. Okay. So now into our actual animation part. So we have our initial positions here. Let's clean them up a little bit. Okay. I'm actually going to clear out everything. Let's get our first first step here. All right, and remember, since we set the hit up 
But we could also do a hip target here. And that's going to be our stay at. Target node here is going to be a hip. Enable the bone node is going to be a hip. And now we can move the hip all over the place. Let's bring it down a little bit and let's work on our animation. Okay, so we're going to get everything in our beginning position, which is going to be the legs out, basically taking a step forward. Let's do the foot R target here, foot L target here. L look at, we're going to make it a little bit higher up there. Arm R target going to be in the opposite direction of the leg R target and the arm L target going to be in the opposite direction of the leg L target. Now we're also going to put the hip up because this is going to be the first step. And now let's add in this keyframe. I'm going to select all of these, hit keyframe. And now we're going to have keyframes for each of our lookouts, both position and rotation. We aren't going to worry about scale, so keep that out of there. Here is our first one. Now we know what our, our final is going to be. It's going to be exactly the same as this. So what we can do is take this, going to duplicate keys. There we go. Now let's go to the halfway. Halfway is going to be exactly the opposite of this. So we're going to put our right foot forward and put our left foot backwards. our hip down so that we're touching the ground in the right place. We're going to take our right arm backwards, put our left arm forward, and then same as before, we're going to add in the keyframe right here in the middle. Okay. Let's see. And there we go. A nice, simple animation. Now there are some points like, let's say we've got right here. We want to make sure that the crossover is looking correct. So take our foot R target and the look at down a bit. And then anytime you make changes, select all with the keyframe or you want what you could do so you don't forget to do something is we hit this record button here. And this will take any of the changes you're making and automatically put a keyframe with that. We're going forward. And here, just a little change there. Make things look a lot more natural. And you could tweak this. There are plenty of tutorials on how to do walking animations all around. So please check it out, have fun with it, and see see what works for you. Now, the main reason that we're using this Superior 2D Skeleton modification instead of the default is because of that issue with the rotation or with the facing the other direction. Now, let's see here. Look at that. Everything just works. So it's going to be nice and easy. Pay no attention to these pointing the wrong way. They work as expected. Okay. And so if, if you were to do another animation, if you wanted another walking animation, I'm sorry, if you wanted it to go left, what I would suggest is you create a walk loop for walk left, and then go up to your character container. We do want scale for this. Insert a key. We don't need to worry about those two. And then insert a keyframe there as well. In fact, let's get rid of the rotation and position there. So now we did the walk. It didn't turn around when we went to the original walk. So let's character container, change this back to one, hit a keyframe, go to the end, another keyframe. We scroll all the way down. We can see that we've got the scale here. And now we can walk right or walk left. And it works both ways. So hopefully you found this interesting, you found this useful. Um, you can see why I wanted to go with the Superior 2D Skeleton modifications as opposed, as opposed to Vanilla Godot. And in the next animation video, we're going to dive into a little bit more 
of animations and we're going to look at animation trees. Now, if you haven't checked out the original 2D animation video, the, the original 2D inverse kin kinematics video, be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link to it right about here, right above me. And if you like what you see, if you want to see more of me, if you want to hear a lot more ums, ahs, and oh, and oh, uh, then feel free, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jddoesdev. I stream pretty frequently, doing web dev, game dev, Godot dev, uh, Blender, and all kinds of stuff. And if you found this useful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel to get updates when new videos come out, and leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to help out, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Take care, have a good one, and I'll see you at the next video.